Hey everyone, thanks for coming by. This is Whistlekick, Martial Arts Radio, episode 307. Today, we're going to talk a bit about the martial arts from Thailand that aren't Muay Thai. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host for the show. I'm the founder of Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel, and I love traditional martial arts. I'm guessing you do too, and that's why you are joining me. Hopefully, this isn't the first time you've joined us. If it is, you might want to head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, join the newsletter, check out the other 306 episodes we have, everything from interviews with prominent martial arts figures to someone who could be or maybe even is your martial arts instructor. Martial arts has an impact on so many, and the goal here is to bring you the stories of those who have trained and benefited from the martial arts, maybe to give you some inspiration in your life, in your martial arts practice. You can also head on over to whistlekick.com, see everything that we make, whether it's digital services like martialartscalendar.com, where you can submit and browse martial arts events in the U.S. for free. Or you can find links to all of our products, including sparring gear and apparel and training accessories, a whole bunch of great stuff, and we're always adding more. Now, you've likely heard of Muay Thai. Translates roughly as the art of eight limbs or eight limb boxing. I've, I've read a number of different translations, and I don't speak Thai, so I can't tell you definitively what it means. I have to go on what I'm reading. But Muay Thai is not the only Thai martial art. It may be the most popular today. It may have influenced MMA and actually quite a bit of self-defense, even in the traditional martial arts sphere. But it is not the only traditional martial art from Thailand. The most popular martial art from Thailand that is not Muay Thai actually precedes Muay Thai. It's called Muay Baran. Muay Baran, or ancient boxing, is a martial art that originated from Thailand in the late 18th century. And the ancestor of, as I've already said, the more commonly known martial art called Muay Thai. The history of Muay Baran starts with a warrior named Nai Khnom Tom. In 1767, the kingdom of Ayutthaya, now Thailand, lost after a long series of wars against the Burmese. This war ended the four-century-old Siamese kingdom, and many people were held captives and taken to Burma. Among these prisoners was the skilled Thai boxer named Nai Kanam Tom. About seven years later, the Burmese king organized a festival that involved a competition between the Thai boxers and the Burmese boxers. The king wanted to see whose technique was superior because the Burmese had their own different style of boxing. Burmese boxing mainly involved fists for fighting, while the Thai boxing, as you might expect, used knees, elbows, feet, and fists. The Thai chose Kanam Tom to fight against the champion of the Burmese. As part of the custom, Kanam Tom performed his Y Crew dance, accompanied by music, before the fight. Kanam Tom defeated and even knocked out the Burmese champion. And the Burmese could not easily accept this defeat. They even went so far as to say that the Y Crew dance was black magic. After all of this, the Burmese king sent another nine skilled boxers to fight Kanan Tom, one after the other. And none of these Burmese fighters succeeded in defeating him, even though Kanan Tom must have been exhausted, fighting off ten boxers in a row. The Burmese king finally accepted defeat and even applauded Kanan Tom because of his extraordinary boxing skills. Then the king said, according to legend anyway, that, quote, Every part of the Siamese is blessed with venom. Even with his bare hands, he can fell nine or ten opponents. But his lord was incompetent and lost the country to the enemy. If he had been any good, there was no way the city of Ayutthaya would ever have fallen. The victory led to the release of Kanam Tom along with his comrades. The Burmese king even offered Kanam Tom his choice of two rewards. Kanam Tom chose two Burmese wives over riches, offering the reason that money was easier to find. Even today, his victory is annually celebrated in Thailand on March 17th, and they call it the National Muay Thai Day. Kanam Tom did not use Muay Baran exactly, but rather another form of martial art similar to it. There were several ancient boxing styles from different regions of Thailand at that time, but they were just lumped together into a single term, Muay Baran. And we kind of see this today when we talk about karate, or we talk about Taekwondo. There are variations, and you know, can we really get down to what the true, and I'm using air quotes as I say this, karate is, the true taekwondo, etc. The modern day Muay Baran is different from the original one. Originally, it was used for self-defense and it was part of the training of military soldiers. It involved lethal and ground fighting techniques that included grappling. 
The Thai embraced the martial art and it became part of the Thai culture where fighters from different regions of the country would gather to test their skills. Eventually, fighters began to wrap their hands and forearms with rope, not only to serve as protection, but also to wound their opponents. And I suspect those of you that are old Van Damme fans might have some visuals as I'm saying this. The reputation of Moi Baran fighters heightened because of their efficiency in close combat, and the best became royal guards to the king. Around 1920s and 1930s, Moi Baran was disciplined and modernized by King Rama VII so that participants would fight in a ring with a set of rules. It adapted the Western style of boxing in terms of referees and rounds and the use of gloves rather than rope to reduce the wounds that can be inflicted during the fight. Moreover, many techniques, especially the deadly ones, were also banned. And this was the reason why Moi Baran's popularity declined. Because of this reformation, the, quote, ancient boxing was eventually called Muay Thai, also referred to as the art of eight limbs. Muay Thai then gained popularity internationally, and it produced thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of practitioners around the world. But Muay Thai and Muay Baran are not the only Thai martial arts. Here are a few others that, I'll be honest, before we started doing the research, I'd never even heard of. Muay Chaya. Muay Chaya is an old martial art founded around 200 years ago by a military leader of the Ratana Kosin Kingdom. It got its name from the town in Thailand. Its techniques are effective against heavier opponents, even without using too much strength. However, immediate counterattacks are required because the attacks may not be strong enough to cause heavy damage on the opponent. A Muay Chai fighter's defense is difficult to penetrate because, much like Muay Thai, elbows and shins are used to block the attacks. Their hops and jumps make them even more difficult to hit as they move around. Lerdit, or Muay Lertrit, is a martial art derived from Muay Baran and has a pretty close resemblance in terms of the techniques used. Lert, Lert, pardon my pronunciation if anybody out there actually speaks Thai with a proper accent, means superior, while rit means power. So we could translate it to boxing of superior power. Its techniques were also based from the strategies of the special infantry corps, which are tum, throwing to the ground, top, meaning crush, chap, meaning grab, and hak, meaning break the joints. Moi lerdit is effective in close combat as fighters are trained to have strong muscles and tendons to perform strikes, grappling, and finishing blows more effectively. And if you're like me, you might be visualizing someone shin kicking a palm tree right now. There seems to be this broad cultural similarity among these martial arts. And I think we see that in every country. You know, when we look at the martial arts of Japan, they all have a similar attitude. Krabi Krabong can be called the armed version of Moiboran. Krabi means sword and Krabong means staff. Other types of weapons are also used, such as Dab, which is a single-edged sword, Nga, which is a bladed staff, and Maisoksan, which is a pair of clubs. According to history, most of the techniques of Krabi Krabong are influenced by Japanese martial arts, such as Okinawan Kabuto. Salat Patani. Salat Patani is a martial art form originated in the Patani Kingdom, which is now a state in Thailand. It has a heavily similarity with Gatka, which is an Indian martial arts style. It has no predefined forms, but rather it has two freestyle forms called Ramayana and animal forms. The Ramayana form includes three figures, which are Seri Rama, which is for good posture, Sita Dui, which is for short movements and fatal attacks, and Hanuman, which is for strength and agility. Each figure has different behaviors, movements, and mannerisms that should be imitated. The animal form consists of six animals, which are the deer for agility, monkey for speed, agility, and impulsiveness, snake for hard and soft techniques that include blades, bird for mimicking eagle, rooster, and crane, tiger for strength, and dragon for locking the opponent using limbs. Initially, Salat Patani does not involve weapons. The practitioners must learn and eventually master the fundamentals before applying the weapons to the techniques. The weapons used include Kayu or the Bate, which are sticks, Pare, which is a machete, broadsword sort of thing, Chindai, Samping, Tombok, Lembing, which is a spear, Karis, which is a dagger, Karambit, hey, there's a term I bet you've heard, which is a tiger claw knife, and Gadak, which is a mace. You know, I always find it interesting when we talk about martial arts 
of a particular country, how we can see elements from other martial arts in them. As we're talking about Salat Batani, we're hearing things around animals. If you talk about animals as they relate to martial arts, you're probably thinking of Chinese martial arts, at least I am. And, you know, this kind of lends itself to something I've said on the show that, you know, martial arts are going to have a lot of similarities regardless of where they come from, because there's only so many ways we can move our body. And cultural influence can be pretty strong, especially when you go back when there were dozens, hundreds, thousands of variations of martial arts, when there wasn't internet and TV and movies, people would share these things. And if you were a newer martial artist, it stands to reason that someone sharing something with you, you're probably not going to spend years or decades with the opportunity to learn from that person. So you're going to take what they teach you in a short period of time and combine it with what you know, what you understand from your own country, your own culture. And thus we see some of this spreading. I think it's cool. And there you have it. Thai martial arts that are not Muay Thai. We will probably talk about Muay Thai in depth at some point. I'm enjoying these research episodes. They've been a lot of fun. I'm learning a lot. Hopefully you're learning something and you enjoy that. If you don't, well, the beauty of the podcast format is you can just skip to the next episode. You can go on to one of the other many, many episodes. But you know what? I would like your feedback. Go ahead, hit me up, email jeremy at whistlekick.com. You can comment over on the blog, the show notes pages, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, or you can get to us via social media. We are at Whistlekick everywhere you would ever imagine to use social media. That's all I've got for today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.